It's an environmentalist's dream. The village of Feldheim, just south of Berlin, gets all of its energy from renewable sources. It's an experiment that stirs strong reactions. As I arrive, this resident is locked in heated debate with a visitor. He thinks Germany is headed down the wrong path. Parliament in Berlin recently approved the phase-out of nuclear power. And the man from Feldheim is certain, sooner or later, everyone will be using renewable energy. Germany is trying to lead the way in going green. I'm doing my bit and have hired an electric car. As I discover, German energy policy has many admirers it's worldwide. It's yeah. it's is it running? It is running. It's Are you running. kidding? No. <laughs> A delegation from South Africa has come to Feldheim to see those policies in action. They're visiting one of the 40 wind turbines that surround the village. The turbines produce more energy than the village needs. The rest goes into the national grid. Among the visitors is Simo Hopa. He says South Africa could learn a lot from the project. It's amazing that people are free uh, from the grid and people can be self-reliant and then can save a lot of money as well. For a developing nation like ours, uh, we need such resources and that is exactly why we're here in Germany to learn more so that we can take the technology back home. Next stop on the tour is the solar power facility. The visitors are clearly impressed by what they see. Wow. Wow. Feldheim also uses biogas alongside wind and solar power. The South African delegates say they hope to build such facilities in their home country. For them, Germany is an example to follow. The villagers in Feldheim are all stakeholders in the energy project. They believe in their experiment. This man says everyone stands to gain. The village gets cheap electricity, green electricity, which everybody is talking about at the moment. And people are happy with the way the building works went too, he says. I ask whether he's proud to be part of such a pioneering project. Clearly he is. But not everyone is so enthusiastic. Resistance has come from outside the village, from a citizen's initiative called the Free Forest. Detlef Gurchik is one of its leaders. He says wind turbines only really benefit the investors. He insists wind power is a good thing when it enables a village to become self-sufficient. The turbines have to be far enough away from the houses so they don't harm people's health. But he says there are too many here. And his group also doesn't want any in the woods. The road to a greener future isn't a smooth one. And it's proving too long for my car. Its battery is dead. It won't get me to my next destination, another 200 kilometers away. So it's in a conventional petrol car that I head on to Lower Saxony. The region was the cradle of Germany's anti-nuclear movement. Alexander Hase Müllner lives in the village of Zimanda with his family. He's happy that Germany is finally turning its back on nuclear power, but he's less happy about the wind turbines near his house. He says they're too close and too loud. Alexander produces his own power from solar panels on his roof. He points out where the wind turbines are, seven or eight hundred meters away to the southwest. There are eight turbines near his village. Alexander started his own initiative against them. Besides the noise, another factor are the animals, he says, the turbines kill. Alexander says the bodies of birds and rare bats have been found under here. A firm comes regularly to catalog the numbers killed. He says the animals' lungs apparently burst because of the lower pressure behind the turbines. But Alexander insists he isn't against wind power in general. He says it's important Germany doesn't go back to nuclear power. 
He believes the country will have to rely on mixed sources. But everything has to be done with moderation. He says you have to keep people on your side and not do things that provoke resistance. He believes attitudes will have to change. I head south to the woods of Thuringen. A new high-voltage electricity line is due to be built here soon to carry power from wind parks in northern Germany to the industrial areas of the south. Hello. Hello. I have an appointment with Thomas and Elke Nordhaus. They've been renovating a cottage in the middle of the woods. I ask where the power lines will be built. Elke says the pylon will be just 80 meters from their house. To make things worse, it'll be 98 meters high, she says. That means if there's a severe storm, which can happen around here, the pylon could fall onto their house. The couple's also worried about the noise and potential health risks. Their house is already worthless. Elke Nordhaus says they haven't bothered finishing renovating this wall. They stopped all work when they heard about the power lines. She says they don't see why they should put money into the house when they might have to leave. The last thing they finished was the balcony. Then they said, that's it. I've come to the nearest town, Groß Breitenbach. The head of the local authority is Petra Enders. She's in favor of new energy solutions, but not when they affect the local population, tourism and the environment. She opposed the new power lines from the outset. She believes that if the country really did rethink energy policy, the lines wouldn't be needed. Petra Enders says the grid needs to be restructured, not expanded. She stresses the importance of decentralized power generation, with electricity produced where it's needed, from renewable sources. She says it shouldn't be transferred long distances through power lines, which cause high energy loss. Petra Enders has her own vision for Groß Breitenbach. One day she wants the town to produce its own electricity and warm water. But what will the projected power line mean for the region? Jürgen Töpfer shows me some existing pylons. The path cut for them through the forest is 100 meters wide. Töpfer founded his own citizens' initiative to fight the new project. Most pylons on that supply line will be twice the height of these. He says the forest has already been blighted enough by the existing electricity lines. If this carries on, Toingen won't have any forests left. The thing the region is famous for will be destroyed. Töpfer has spent his whole life here. For him, living without the forest is unthinkable. He spent a great deal of his young and adult life in the woods, he says. He brought his dogs here. It's where he comes to relax, and many others do too. They come for the peace and quiet. Renewable energy also comes at a cost, and not everyone is happy. The German government is pushing big infrastructure projects rather than local solutions. Some people don't like that. Nuclear power, no thanks. But for many, it's also no to wind turbines and power lines in their backyard. <laughs>